final case this morning is Wren v. Hall. Good morning, Your Honors. My name is Brooke Nutter, and I represent the appellant in this case, Michelle Wren. May it please the Court. I was also the trial counsel, and Mr. Mandelbaum's partner, Scott Hewitt, was the trial counsel on this case as well. So I believe both firms may be very familiar with this case. This is an automobile accident case, an automobile that took place in June of 2010. It went to trial in February of 2013 and resulted in a no liability on the part of the named defendant. My client, Michelle Wren, was involved in the accident with the appellant, Appellee Ms. Hall, and there was also a Fabre defendant that was part of this trial. You may see her referred to as Ms. Hickman in this case. This is an accident that took place at the intersection of South Florida Avenue and Edgewood in Lakeland, Florida. My client was located behind the Hall vehicle at an intersection. Ms. Hall was attempting to turn left in the middle of an intersection, and the Fabre defendant was traveling in the opposite direction, came through the intersection. The collision took place there, and there were parties that were injured. During the course of the testimony, Ms. Hall testified, as did others as well. I included in the record the most pertinent and relevant information that this court needs to review Judge Self's decision to refuse to allow a certain jury instruction. Tell me why, if you gave both instructions, explain to me why that doesn't create confusion for the jury. They're separate. It seems to me I've got to either stop to avoid a collision, or I've got to keep on going and lead to a collision. That has been presented many times in many different ways. However, that's not the case law. There is no case that says that is how a left turn must occur. There is no case law that interprets these statutes that says you're allowed to pull into the middle of an intersection and stop and wait for oncoming traffic before you can turn. The statutes 316.1945 and 316.122, which is the turning left statute, don't conflict with each other. In fact, they should be read together so this whole thing is clear. Because if you have oncoming traffic, based upon both of these statutes, you shouldn't pull into the intersection. We see it every day. However, it's not correct. That doesn't make it correct. The statute 316.1945 says you should not enter an intersection and stop. Read with 316.122, which says you must yield to oncoming traffic before turning left, that shows us you've got to stop at the stop bar before you are allowed to go into this intersection and turn left. But regardless of how that's interpreted, 316.1945 was not— Even on a green light. This was—well, the evidence in this case, the record evidence would be it was yellow. As far as the record evidence that has been submitted to you. It may have been red. It was certainly not green. There's no testimony that it was green. But reading these statutes together, it's clear from the Hall testimony that is part of this record that she entered the intersection and she admitted herself that she stopped on not once but on two occasions. And that stopping is in direct violation of 316.1945. Given the definitions that Judge Self was also given that would have been read to the jury. And had the jury read that instruct or had the jury been benefited by that instruction being part of this case, then that would have avoided the confusion that the jury saw. We understand that the standard of review in this case is an abuse of discretion. However, this court has held the standard for reviewing the failure to give a jury instruction is, quote, whether there was a reasonable possibility that the jury could have been misled 
by the failure to give the instruction. And that's the Ruiz case from 1975, this district. Um, given the testimony and given the outcome, it is very confusing. Just as Judge LaRose has already pointed out, why not, how come the other one has not covered this? They must be read together. And the testimony that you've given, the record evidence that we submitted to you, shows clearly that that instruction should have been given. Yes, you did not receive the entire record in this case because we did not think uh, it was relevant. As a matter of fact, what I supplied you was the evidence that showed this instruction should have been read. In the Supreme Court case of, I believe it's the Seward case, Seaboard v. Addison, the court states when there is evidence of such a violation, a party is entitled to a jury instruction thereon. In this case, Ms. Hall's own testimony establishes that she stopped in the middle of the intersection, not at the stop bar. It is unequivocal that she states she stopped in the middle of the intersection. This is not a standing case. There's three definitions uh, that are pertinent to 316.145. One would be the standing definition, one is a parking definition, and stopping basically says that once a vehicle comes to a complete stop or a cessation of movement, that is a stop. And that is the evidence that we feel was uncon uncontroverted and should have allowed, should have dictated that Judge Self read this instruction to the jury. But you, you, you point out we don't have the, uh, the jury charge transcript, correct? You do have the jury charge. You don't have the entire right. transcript, I, which was uh, read to the jury. Do you have any objections as to wh what, if any, objections were made during the charge? There were no objections made during the charge other than the charge conference where we requested okay. the instruction. The judge denied our request. But certainly if it were read, then I'm sure Mr. Mandelbaum would have submitted that as a supplement to the record. I don't think there's any question that it was not read and that we wanted it to be read since it was requested. Okay. And, and there's not a full set of instructions in the record. Am I correct on that? There is not a full set of instructions. The only instructions that you may have are part of the, the record that we did submit, which I believe was the left turn statute and the stop standing or parking a vehicle within an intersection. Okay. Again, I think those are the relevant portions uh, that need to be decided in this case. Um, and then again, the judge disagreed with the definitions that uh, we supplied, which were read through the, the Florida statutes. I don't understand um, why Judge Self felt that it was not applicable, but after I read the definition to him, he says, no, 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 that's not going to apply. I disagree. This is not, this statute is about people just parking their car or stopping and sitting in an intersection. And that's clearly not the case. That's not what the statute says. The statute says stopping a vehicle within an intersection is not prohibited. It is actually prohibited. You cannot do that. And so that's why we requested that simple instruction. This caused a lot of confusion on this jury, obviously. Um, I believe there's also the record that contains the jury questions. There were questions uh, asked of the jury, and this is part of the record. And they asked specifically whether Ms. Hall received any driving citation uh, as a result of this crash. And obviously, we all know that that is not proper and that was not allowed. But that shows you there was confusion on this jury. We believe it's a simple, fa a simple case given the, well, it's a simple appeal given the facts that we've presented to you. And um, I'd like to reserve the rest of my time if I could. Okay, thank you.
May it please the court, my name is Sarah Sharp and I, along with my co-counsel Sam Mandelbaum, represent the appellee in this matter. We ask that the court affirm the decision of the Polk County Circuit Court for two reasons. First, appellant has failed to provide an adequate record to, de to determine the issues on appeal. Although this appeal arises from a five-day jury trial with multiple, multiple witnesses, the record on appeal includes only the testimony of Destiny Hall, appellee, as well as a few scant charging conferences. Second, even if the record- What else should we have? What else do we need to decide this? Appellant, in appellant's argument as to the failure to give the requested jury instruction, he states that, the, that there were conflicting stories as to how this accident occurs, which apparently would suggest that this requested instruction should apply. As there's only one, one, test, one record of the testimony in the, in the record on appeal, that of, appellee, ap, of appellees, we can only look at her statement of how the accident occurred, which says that she stopped for a brief second while she was waiting to make the turn once she was past the line, and that she was sitting in the intersection waiting for the cars to turn. Her testimony, testimony also states that as she was approaching the light, the light was green, and that she only saw that it turned yellow once she passed the stop bar line. The, the requested instruction, the statute in this case states, except when necessary to avoid conflict with traffic, no person shall stop, stand, or park within an intersection. Appley's testimony clearly states that any stop or pause that she made within the intersection was only once she passed the line and the, and the light had turned yellow and that she stopped to avoid conflict with other traffic, as specifically authorized in the statute. So without any evidence that she stopped in, within the intersection as contemplated by the statute, we cannot determine that, that this requested instruction should have been given. In, in this case, in deciding whether a jury instruction, the failure to give a requested jury instruction was an abuse of discretion or a reversible error, the court, this court held in Krolik v. Monroe that three criteria apply. First, the requested special instruction must be an accurate statement of the law. Second, the requested instruction must be supported by the evidence. And third, the requested instruction must be necessary to properly resolve this case. As I've just explained, the, the requested instruction in this case was not an accurate statement of the law as applied to the facts of this case. Although appellant- But didn't the trial judge get it wrong in how he interpreted? No, Your Honor. The, the trial court was correct in his interpretation of the statute um, as, as is emphasized and reaffirmed by look, looking through at the other cases interpreting a violation of this 316.1945. In those cases, they are each easily distinguished from the case at hand as all of them involve a, uh, a, basically a disruption in the flow of traffic or a parking in a, in a place that impedes the safe flow of traffic. There are obstructive parking cases and none of those cases involve a left turning vehicle pausing or stopping with an intersection in order to make that case, in order to make their turn. In fact, as we were, um, as we were reviewing these cases involving a violation of 316.1945, we came across a case interpreting what is and is not an illegal stop or when is it an illegal stop within a right of way or a thoroughfare. And in that case that we submitted yesterday evening, uh, it was a, an older fourth district case, um, Tozier versus Jarvis. In that case, the court held that it's not an illegal stop within a roadway when a vehicle slows down or even stops to complete a 90 degree turn as this is often foreseeable, reasonable, and necessary under certain traffic conditions, and particularly where the vehicle is turning off of a thoroughfare into uh, among, a, um, among a number of driveways or stores. In this case, we have a turn at a left, a left turn at an intersection, which is certainly foreseeable and reasonable that a left turning vehicle would pause or stop within the intersection. So given this interpretation and the evidence before the court, we, we know that the, there is no evidence to support that a, reason, a jury could have reasonably concluded that Appley violated the stopping, standing, or parking statute 
as appellant's interpretation is contrary to the intent and thrust of the statute as emphasized by the case law and as explained through the court's interpretation. They interpreted it correctly. Last, um, a requested special jury instruction is not, uh, the failure to give a requested special jury instruction is not reversible error if it is not necessary to properly resolve the case. In this case, in the same charging conference where the court determined that the stopping standing statute did not apply to the facts of, case, of the case and denied giving that instruction, the court did grant the giving of a special jury instruction as to evidence of negligence for violation of a traffic statute for other traffic statutes which were applicable to the facts of this case. Those included the excessive speed statute, the left turn statute, um, the, special st the special hazard statute, and the careless driving statute. Giving the instruction on the left turn statute would have allowed the jury to reasonably conclude that Appley, that Appley had violated, that her had, had failed to observe the left turn statute by not yielding the right of way to oncoming tra traffic, and they could have used that determination as evidence of negligence. However, they did not. These, the instruction on the left turn statute adequately covers appellant's theory that Appley negligently um, navigated their way through the intersection. Um, if you can, as you brought up earlier, if you consider the application of the left turn statute in conjunction with the stopping standing statute, it leads to an untenable rule, which would require, a, when a left turning vehicle is entering an intersection under a favorable traffic signal, they must yield the right of way to oncoming traffic. In that case, it necessarily requires a vehicle entering the intersection yielding the right of way to sometimes momentarily pause or stop based on the traffic conditions. If you apply the stopping standing statute simultaneously, any time that a vehicle has entered the intersection and is attempting to make a left turn and yielding the right of way, they would simultaneously be in violation of the stopping standing statute. And based on the common sense dictates that that can't be the correct result. Appellant argues that we do have all of the information that we need to determine this case. In Applegate versus Barnett Bank, the court stated that an appellate court cannot properly resolve the underlying factual issues to conclude that a court's judgment was not supported by the evidence or some alternative theory without an adequate record. In this case, the, the record is missing crucial, crucial aspects and evidence of any, anything to suggest that Appley had stopped within the intersection as contemplated by the statute. And if you have no further questions, um, may I consult with co-counsel briefly? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honors. Um, in conclusion, Appley respectfully requests that this court affirm the decision of the lower court. Thank you for your time. Thank you. disagree with uh, my opponent's counsel regarding other testimony is needed for this court to make a determination today. Because I agree with the Supreme Court of Florida that says that once evidence is presented of a Florida uniform traffic uh, law being violated, then that instruction is, is entitled to be read to a jury. And that's what should have happened in this case. As you know now, the other uh, Uniform traffic violation statutes were read regarding excessive speed, the careless driving, and the left turn uh, violation. There certainly would not have been any harm and would have avoided unnecessary confusion if the judge had also read our requested instruction regarding no stopping within an intersection. Um, once the evidence is presented, then it is reversible error to not include that instruction, and that's based upon the Seaboard case, which is a Supreme Court case, and the Yellow Cab case, which is a second DCA case, which is cited within my brief. Um, we ask that you reverse and remand this for a new trial. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. All right, that concludes today's session. Um, Thank you all. Court is adjourned.